Sisa. If you are coming to this video, I assume you already know a little bit about the California State Summer School of the Arts. Otherwise, why would you just be looking up random acronyms? So I went to CESA. I'm a graduate of the class of 2018 in both high school and in CESA. I went as a high school graduate, which is the maximum age that you can go, because it took me three tries to get in. I went for visual arts and I double majored in painting and ceramics. That's why you see my friend over here. This was my self-portrait in my ceramics class. That boy got me a scholarship. <laughs> I also did receive the uh, one of the two scholarships given out for the visual arts department and one of the 12 total that are given out at the end of CESA. But that is literally the least of anyone's concerns. You don't go to CESA to get a scholarship. You go to CESA because it's amazing. So CESA or the California State Summer School of the Arts is a program that happens every year at CalArts in Valencia, California or Santa Clarita and it's in the greater and it's just a congregation of a bunch of really gay really talented art students onto one campus for an entire month you stay there you stay in the Shinar halls and you just take art classes all day every day except for Sunday maybe Saturday I forgot. It's an application-based program. There are six departments, I think. It's uh, visual arts, theater, music, creative writing, film, and dance, I think. Hope I'm not missing anyone. And each department is handled independently. They all have their own heads. Um, but it all falls under the CESA umbrella. So when you finally get shipped over to Valencia the first day, they hook you up with all the other visual arts or whatever department you're in, kids, and you just have at it. How I heard about the program initially was through my art program at my school, which was already really good. And we had a bunch of people from throughout the years who had gone and then come back and told us about their experiences which were all like insanely positive, except for one kid, but... Oh, I had applied for three years in a row, and I did not get in until my third attempt, which was the final possible year that I could go. But I got in. And so I graduated high school, and then I went to CalArts as one of the oldest people there, because you can go anytime from freshman to the end of senior year, as long as you are a high schooler, they will let you in. I don't know if they'll let you in if you graduate 8th grade, but it's a little early for that. You can only get financial aid if this is your first time applying and you get in. They won't give you any financial aid if you are a returning student. Because they really want to encourage first time students to come in. Like I said, visual arts was my department. So I can only speak really on how the class structure of visual arts worked. I don't really know about other departments. Okay, Cal Arts is a weirdly transformative place. It's isolated while at the same time being around so many other things. Like the largest strip mall I have ever seen is 10 minutes away by walking. But the campus itself is its own entity because you have the main building, which is like totally haunted, so weirdly built, like it took them years to keep adding all these things on, so the whole main building of CalArts is built like a maze, like it's so hard to figure out where everything is, but like once you figure it out, it's amazing. There are like so many iconic places in the CalArts building, like the sub-level, where everybody graffitis all over the walls, and so all CISA kids, it's a tradition that you add your own graffiti to the sub-level, which I did. There's also, you know, the iconic CalArts rooms like 
A one one two, A one one two, A one one two. CalArts is pretty cool. As for the living situation at CISA, all you have to do is cross a grass field and you're at Chenard, which is the uh, resident hall. I like my room. I think the RAs were the best part for me because I love my RAs. But in terms of like my actual roommates, that's its own story. They weren't the best, I think. I think with the worst. It was just like, one of them I was neutral, the other one I was like friends with, but she had a lot of stuff going on. So I was like, huh. But you have a lot of time to go out and do whatever with your friends that you make. And I made a lot of friends, a lot of really fun, diverse friends. So we had like our big old group, like 10 people, and it was just a lot of fun. We'd all eat meals together. And speaking of meals, I really like the food at CalArts. Like the pizza is so good. But a lot of people didn't really like the food too much. Because it was a little bit repetitive and I understand that. And a little bit bland at times. And we all had a joke like, why the chicken so dry? But it was still good <laughs> to me. I, I had no complaints. I ate really well. The, for the classes, I had really good classes. I was in painting and ceramics and then we all have to also take design and figure drawing. They were really interesting classes. I loved all of them. My painting teacher, Jay Stuckey, but he's the only name I'll say because other people ha always had varying opinions about their other teachers for their other courses. All fun stuff. It was really always a good class environment because everyone who's at CISA really wants to be there. And I think that's one of the things that makes it so magical is that everybody is so excited to just be there and to just enjoy the time that they're there because it's only a month and it goes by so fast. Like unbelievably fast because you're just always having fun. And that's why like post CISA depression is a thing. <laughs> Like, I definitely got it, where you come back home and you're like, my normal life sucks, because you're like having so much fun at CISA. That doesn't always happen. <laughs> but, um, like, I know people who didn't have fun. Usually they were music students, oddly enough. If, they're, if you're a music student and you want to actually learn new things, apparently it's not really the best in terms of like a classical training, whereas the visual arts is very classical but with a twist. Um, but a lot of music students found themselves being bored because they didn't have any rigorous instruction. They were just able to play all day. In terms of my general experience with CISA, I have utterly no complaints. Like it was really such a magical, amazing time. And that's the opinion most people have is that it's amazing. And I kind of want to go to CalArts now, even though I'm very happy where I'm currently going. Go dragons! <laughs> it's like being in CalArts and present in there is amazing. And then also being with artists all the time who are always so fun and happy to be there. Maybe not happy deep on the inside because painting. I sound like a real weenie, huh? Well, I am. It's obviously not complete freedom because that's the thing is that it's a state run program technically like the California State Silver School of the Arts. So because it's a public program, they have to be kind of strict on certain rules. I personally didn't know anybody who got kicked out for drugs, but every year somebody gets kicked out for drugs. Out here Al Art. smoking big doinks. I didn't know anybody who did any actual drugs at CISA. But it, like I said, it happens and they're very strict about that. Like extremely strict. Um, they also don't like open displays of affection. But other than obvious like drug and sex laws, CalArts is very free and very open. Oh wait, the biggest rule of all, you cannot miss class. You cannot be late. If you are late to class too often, you are subject to be kicked out of the entire program. 
because they don't hold your hand and they don't just go like, here you go, sweetie. Here, I'll walk you to your next class and to your meals and to your dorm. No, they're like, you have to be here at this time. And if you're not, well, that's your fault. And I was never late to class. I was very close a few times, but I was never late. Um, and I was never late. We have a curfew. I was never late for that, but I was also very close to being late. Because sometimes you just want to be out. Like, the curfew is kind of early, in my opinion, for me. And especially now that I'm in college, I realize how early that is, and to have a curfew at all. But it makes sense, because they just want to be accountable for everybody. Because, like I said, it's a state-run program, and they reiterate this. So, don't expect to go there and have unlimited freedom, because you definitely won't. Especially because you're, if you're a little older, you're going to be surrounded by people of all ages, including freshmen, including people who are like barely 14 years old. We survived, the, we had friends who were freshmen. Like freshmen were like cool. Everyone there is generally pretty cool. I would say everyone who showed up displayed a certain amount of maturity to get in and then to like be on their best behavior because everybody was kind of scared to like go out of line because like I said they were a little bit strict about certain things but really we had a lot of freedom in terms of our self-expression and where we could be on campus and who we could talk to so overall I'd say a very liberating experience and then of course everybody has their CISA sweetheart one time a guy flirted with me and I was like my automatic response was like to scream no! In his face. And I was like, how do I get in? This sounds amazing. How does one apply to get in? Well, you go to the CISA website and you hit apply. I can only speak on behalf of visual arts, really. But I know a little bit about the applications for the other departments in terms of general tips. I don't know the specifics of like music or dance or theater. In terms of visual arts, and I guess also <gasps> animation. I forgot animation as a department in the beginning. That's literally the most famous one. In terms of animation and visual arts, they have similar-ish department application. You have to submit, I'll just say in terms of visual arts. In terms of visual arts, you need to submit a technical piece, a political piece, and a personal piece. So what I did for my technical piece was just a charcoal still life, which I'll try to put on screen if I can figure out how to edit something. Um, for my political piece, I did a pretty funny political piece and for my AP portfolio, AP Studio Art drawing and for my personal I did a clay sculpture and that's how I got the double major if you put for visual arts if you put um, two kinds of mediums that they have available to learn in your portfolio they'll usually give you the double major like if you want a double major in ceramics and just put one ceramic piece or if you want to do a double major in printmaking and painting then you can do some print making aspects to your piece you know just like in, if you want to double major in something then you can just add one of the pieces in that medium and they'll usually give it to you and like I said this was my third attempt at the application like I had done the same application three times before and no there is no essay they do ask for like a comment or like a brief description on each piece you submit but otherwise there is no essay it's a hundred percent really on your art not on anything else but you also need two recommendations so that helps but i really had the same people recommending me every time my art teacher and then like a different outside drawing teacher that i had yeah, don't get your family members to do it because that's ridiculous they want teachers if you've only ever had one drawing teacher or if you've never had any drawing teacher then still use an academic teacher not just Anybody, I guess. You don't have to be technically the greatest ever, you know? You don't have to be a literal Caravaggio or Michelangelo or something like that. 
you just have to have your voice and your unique perspective in your art making and I will say that it is a rough application season like every year every year they get way more applicants than they can let in so the really the way to get in at least for me it was for your technical piece yeah show how technically good you are but like for your personal and your political especially show what is interesting about your perspective do something that wouldn't be done in class necessarily like as a common everyday assignment or if it is a common assignment make it unique and then i know that's a lame advice because everyone's like be yourself and be unique but really try and be different that is the key sisa likes to accept people who aren't basic with their art making they want to accept people who at least show a glimmer of the ability to think beyond the traditional. And that's CalArts in general. CalArts really likes having people who can think different than everyone else. And the same goes for CISA. I know so many people who have gone, or not so many people. Well, actually, I guess now I do know so many people because I went, but. Even before CISA, I knew people who had gone and just talked about having the time of their lives and I went and had the time of my life and it was a great way, especially being a graduated high school senior, to transition into going to college because it's a little taste of what's to come. It's not the full experience because you're not absolutely free, but it's a great way to experience actual collegiate living. Especially if you want to go to Cal Arts, or you want to go to art school, or you want to seriously pursue the arts, CISA is great. Even if you don't even want to pursue the arts, but you have an affinity for them, and you're trying to go into like pre-med or something, it's still great for any application. It's great just in general. So apply.